So right here is a classic farmhouse style table. We actually have two of these and we've used them for years. But we recently redid some things around here and I think we only need one. So I've already taken the other table out into the shop and I want to upcycle it. I want to turn it into something completely different, something that's going to fit better with the way we live and what we need right now. Now I'm actually thinking we might be able to get two projects out of this one table. I mean, it's a beautiful tabletop, right? So project number one, we want this round, like bistro style table, I guess you can call it. And project number two, I want to make a desk. Small kind of useful desk. So we have four legs, right? So we have enough legs for one table. We need legs for another table. You can even see the marks where this was turned on a lathe. It's heavy, it's a nice, you know, solid wood. I'm just debating about whether to use this for the table or the desk. So these were the cross pieces that held, you know, the legs together. I should probably just keep this video. So what we have here is a blank canvas, right? Endless possibilities. I'm going to set up the CNC machine for this project, but obviously there are a lot of different ways to cut a piece of wood, right? Okay, I get the table is clean, control is right there. Let's uh, start up the, the machine and uh, get it warmed up. Let's enable the machine and turn the spindle on. Securing material to the CNC is always a main thing, like what's the best way? In this instance, we're not going to use the whole piece. We're going to cut out two sections, so there's some space where we're not going to be cutting that we're not going to need. So then I think the best thing would be to just screw it down. So we have this board or this tabletop right here. So the idea is to get two tables out of it. So let's kind of mark out here, like what are we looking to accomplish? Number one, I want a round table and that's going to be like 24, 20, maybe 26 inches in diameter. So I'm thinking it's going to go right here. Now I want to leave a little bit of room on the corners for the bit to cut. You don't want to go all the way to the edge. This is just going to be a straight cut. It's going to be a desk. But what I want to do first of all before doing any cutting um, is to clean this up. So this has a stain and like a polyurethane on it. To clean this, I'm going to do um, some pretty quick, very shallow cuts, like five thou cut. You can always do a second one later on, like a ten thou cut. Um, and I'm going to be using this bit. This is a three quarter inch up cut bit. It makes chips instead of dust, which I think is preferable. So, yeah. Now I can look at my, my board here and see, well, I can secure it right here. I can secure it there. I can secure it there and there. So I have a couple of spaces. So I need to countersink so that I can secure this and there won't be any metal protruding. So I can run my bit all over. This is the kind of table that, you know, I bet you had one when you were young or your grandma had one or your neighbor had one there just everywhere. And I mean, they're mass produced, but the, I, I, I bet this wood is probably beech, I would imagine. This one has done its job. Now we can remove it. Okay. Yay. Okay, we got the dust shoe, we got the height set, we got the corner set, we got the program set. Estimated time is like half an hour about. I knew I wanted the round table to have a different finish, which is why I'm only cleaning up that one side. Uh, you can also see that the surface is a little rough. That's because of the upcut bit. Uh, to smoothen it out, you can run a second pass with a carbide surfacing bit or, or just do some sanding later on. So what we need here is a circle, right? I'm using Vectric by Aspire, um, adding some sunken in tabs and doing a profile cut. Okay, so initially I was thinking about using these legs for this table, but after looking here, I mean, I think these are way too chunky for this size. So I want to make some new legs. To make these legs, I have a nice piece of red oak here. The old legs are like 28 inches and I think I'm going to go with the same size. Now I do have the rotary attachment on the, on the CNC, so I can make round pieces on there. Um, and I do like the idea of round pieces, especially like tapered nicely. So the design that I'm thinking about here is first 
a square on top um, that are connecting the rails together with dowels. So I need somewhat chunky squares and then tapered from there. So this is one and three quarter. If we cut this, we get a square one and three quarter. Then we have our diameter here is going to be one and three quarter. Now I can rip this down and I have enough for four legs. Now if we made this round first, then we're gonna have, the square is gonna be within here even smaller. So in order to maintain some, some, some chunkiness, I'm thinking about not starting the round over until maybe further down. So I retain some of the squareness on top and then um, go from there. So it changes the design a little bit. So what we need now is a design file for the fourth axis on the CNC and it's a little different from designing two-dimensional things. You kind of need to think about it as a round piece of wood that you roll out into a flat sheet and you create different profiles. For this design here I really wanted to go clean and simple, no ornate curves or anything. First up a roughing pass with a quarter inch end middle. Then I run a finishing pass with an eighth inch bullnose bit. And the whole process took about 30 minutes per leg. Um, and here now I used a two inch carbide surfacing bit to smoothen out the surface. And the reason for doing this now and not before is because at this point there's no polyurethane finish or anything to gum up the blade. Okay, so the legs, um, you can see them here looking really good. So this is an oversized right now. Uh, they're going to be cut down to like 28 inches, so they're going to be cut here. Also left a piece at the bottom here so that uh, I have something to cut it against on the table saw. And then we're going to need some rails as well. So I want to cut all the legs obviously to the same length. Yeah, I, I'm thinking this is looking really great. I think this is a good proportion to the legs and the kind of the thinness. And then next is the dowels. It's kind of neat getting two new projects out of the one old table. Of course, with some new wood. Okay. Got a brand new day here. Got my legs, got my railings, and now I'm gonna connect them together. It's nice and simple because everything is the same size. So I'm going to be using dowels for this. So the very first thing I want to do is to mark out where I'm going to drill uh, so I don't get confused. One thing that um, you know, I have to make sure of is since I'm having the dowels going in both directions, I have to position um, these railings on the outside. I can't have them on the inside or here because then they would run into each other, right? Every time I'm using dowels though, I'm reminded like, oh, it's such a nice joint. It, you know, you're using wood and glue. And then I'm gonna put two uh, quarter inch dowels in each. This is a bit right here. This bit is gonna go through here. So basically I have set this at a distance to go through here and then drill slightly more than half the distance of the dowel. You want a little bit of extra space so that when the glue comes in here, it doesn't, you know, get too tight so the joint will break. So 
I got my two sets of legs now. I would say with doweling, the hardest thing is always to get them to line up just right. <laughs> That's why it's nice to use a jig or something, you know? So, got the round table done. Now I have this piece left and I am going to basically recreate the other table in a smaller scale for this desk and just uh, chop up the rails a little bit and attach them with pocket holes. Here we go. Okay, these are the same size. I just need to cut these rails here. So we're fixing up the upstairs right now because we're having someone to come and stay with us for a little while. And uh, we've been building like some basic furniture and stuff. One of the things that we really needed up there was some sort of desk situation. So. So here we have the uh, repurposed farmhouse table. It kind of turned into a mini farmhouse table, I'd say. It looks, it looks kind of chunky, you know, but I really like it. I think it's really cute. And for this one, just kept, you know, the finish, the paint, everything as it was, the railing. Didn't do one new thing to this thing, other than just cut it off and, and put back on the, the railings and the legs. It kind of feels like we have our very own little restaurant here now. <laughs> little coffee shop or something. So you can kind of see the profile of the legs. It's very kind of sleek and simple. Another thing I really like is even though this is stained, you can still see the grain uh, of the wood. So it's not like it's painted. It has a beautiful kind of texture to it. When we first got this table at the garage sale, I don't know how many years ago now, it had a rather yellow tone and that's kind of what I wanted to get away from initially when I stained it that kind of dark top, which I still like with the either white legs or the dark legs. But for this one, I really wanted to go lighter instead of darker for the top, especially with the combination of this darker base. So I added this whitening oil to it um, and I think it definitely is working. It, it's pretty light in color. I might add a, a couple more coats. Oh, this is the finish that I put on the tabletop. I actually bought this in Sweden. This is a Swedish brand called Norgabel. They make furniture, like really beautiful stuff. A lot of their pieces had this kind of, not a whitewashed look, but slightly lighter in color. Like, so I was like, how did you accomplish that? What did you do? And, and they're like, well, we use this product. I was like, okay, give it to me. It's amazing though, isn't it? How the same surface, the same tabletop material can it can look so different depending on how you treat it, how you finish it. When I think about the desk up there now, it looks like a, it feels to me like a chubby little horse, or it's so compact and, and sturdy. This is like a sleek little, you know, table with the thinner legs, and it's like, it's, it's like completely different, but I, I really like both of them in different ways. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, hope you're doing well. And uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. It's so smooth. Once I put on 
a couple more of the whitening oil. I'm going to put some of our wax polish on it. But I want to give it a couple more coats first. But it has a really great smooth finish. 